Apex Liz, Michael Haddon here. Rust is deceptive with its difficulty. Once you understand a few concepts, the whole language is so much easier to use. You may be fighting with your code, like in this example, borrow of moved value. What on earth does that mean? Or like in this example, use of moved value. Both of these code examples seem like they should execute normally, and they would in other languages. However, Rust has specific intentional quirks that you will love if you understand the purpose. Let's dive right in. First things first, let's talk about ownership. Rust's ownership system helps ensure memory safety without the need for garbage collection. This leads to more efficient and performant code. Remember these three rules of ownership. 1. Each value in Rust has a single owner. 2. When the owner goes out of scope, the value is automatically dropped. 3. Only one mutable reference or multiple immutable references can exist for a given value. Got it? Great. Now let's move on to borrowing. Borrowing is all about letting your code access data without taking ownership. There are two types of borrowing in Rust, mutable and immutable. When you create a reference to a value, you are borrowing it. The trick is to remember that the mutable references must be unique, while you can have multiple immutable references. Let's start with an example of creating immutable and mutable references. Notice how we use the ampersand to create references. Immutable references allow read-only access, while mutable references, donated by ampersand mutt, allow modification. Now, we're going to explore lifetimes, a crucial aspect of Rust's ownership and borrowing system. Lifetimes help ensure Rust that references are valid for only as long as they are in use. By explicitly annotating lifetimes, you can give the Rust compiler the necessary information to check for dangling references. Let's implement a function that returns the longer of two strings. In this example, we define a lifetime parameter apostrophe a and use it to annotate the input string references and the output. This tells Rust that the returned reference will have the same lifetime as the shortest input lifetime. This is because the returned reference cannot outlive the shorter of the two input lifetimes and ensures no dangling references will occur. Sometimes you need to create a new independent copy of a value while still keeping the original value intact. That's where Rust's clone method comes in handy. It is also a bit of a cheat tool that you can use to avoid all these weird pesky Rust benefits. Let's take a look at an example that demonstrates the use of clone to avoid ownership issues. Instead of transferring ownership from S1 to S2, we create a new separate copy of S1's value using the clone method. This way, both S1 and S2 are valid and can be used independently of each other without triggering any ownership errors. Keep in mind that cloning might have performance implications as it creates a deep copy of the value. Therefore, it is essential to use it judiciously and only when necessary to avoid potential performance issues. Now, let's talk about shared ownership with RC and ARG. These two smart pointers allow multiple parts of your code to share ownership of a value and they automatically clean up the memory once all owners are done using it. RC stands for reference counting and is used in single threaded scenarios while ARC, short for Atomic Reference Counting, is suitable for multi-threaded scenarios. Let's explore a quick example using RC. We create an RC string called S1. We then create two new RC string instances, S2 and S3, by cloning S1. The RC Smart Pointer takes care of reference counting ensuring that the memory is only deallocated once all the RC instances are dropped. Only use these though when absolutely necessary. RC and ARC introduce some overhead due to the aforementioned reference counting, so it's best to use them only when you genuinely need shared ownership. 
In most cases, Rust's ownership and borrowing system is sufficient to manage resources. Before we wrap up, let's go over some tips and tricks to help you master Rust's ownership and borrowing system. 1. Keep functions small and focused to avoid lifetime conflicts. 2. Use Rust's smart pointers like RC and ARC for shared ownership. 3. Make use of the clone method when you need to create a deep copy of a value. Keep practicing and you'll be a Rust ownership and borrowing pro in no time. Thanks for joining us in this deep dive into Rust's ownership and borrowing system. I hope you've learned a ton and are ready to apply these concepts to your Rust projects. Thanks for checking out this video. As always, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Cheers.